Hi guys, um, I hope you're okay. Um, just recently I finished devouring Johan Harry's latest book, which is called A Stolen Focus. Right. Harry is a brilliant author, uh, well, I think, who, who's a journalist, but he wrote a book previously called Lost Connections, which was about causes of depression. And he's a, he's a really lovely writer. He's very honest. And in Stolen Focus, he's talking about lack of attention and how there's this epidemic of lack of attention, which is developing in the Western world and trying to find the reasons for that. And some of them are quite obvious, I think. Mostly it's interruption. But um, and I know things have changed over the past few years. And he, and he did have a digital detox thing where he was, had the privilege of going for three months to uh, Cape Cod and then living on the beach and then left his laptop and his phone and never touched it. And then, then spent a year or two uh, doing the research on lack of attention. Now, I want to reference that against a story. Um, so some years ago, there was a myth on, on, on in the internet about McDonald's milkshakes and how they were made of hydrogenated chicken fat. And when you went to the menu counter at McDonald's and you looked at the menu, um, they were not down as a vegetarian option. So this myth, because you can stick the straws straight up in them and, and, and they were made of hydrogenated chicken fat. And I remember speaking to someone that I know and, and saying, oh my God, it turns out McDonald's milkshakes are made of hydrogenated chicken fat. Now, I've never had many McDonald's milkshakes in my life, maybe not five, but, um, but I was just thinking that's horrible. That's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. And the person's response to that was, oh, but they taste so good. And so I thought, God, what, what would I have to tell you about McDonald's milkshakes to get you not to have them? You know, would I have to tell you they were made of pig's feet? Or would I have to tell you that, you know, 200 children in Afghanistan die every milkshake you drink? Or what? what where's the cutoff line? Because even though it might not be good for you, it tastes good, so you're still happy to have it. Okay, so that's part one of what I'm talking about today. And, and there's a point for that, because in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, there was a, a psychologist called B.J. Skinner, whose who's stuff, his Wikipedia page is on here. And in Harry's book, he explains um, B.J. Skinner's theory of, of, um, of reinforcement and his behavioural his behavioral science theory, where he talks about um, operant conditioning. So operant conditioning started in animals, because Skinner thought that you could teach animals basic tasks if you rewarded them. So he took a pigeon, and every time the pigeon made the movement that he wanted, say lifted its left wing, he gave it a food pellet. And then over a time, and over a period of time, he could give the pigeon a food pellet, and it would move its wing for him. And then he taught the pigeons to press buttons, and then he taught monkeys to vacuum clean, using that, that conditioning theory. And that stuff stayed around for a while, and people used it for parenting, and then it kind of lost its vogue. But in the 1990s and 2000s, it was picked up again by a group at Stanford University, and one of the guys was called Tristan. Uh, and he um, had been a magician as a, as a boy and been very interested in magic. And the long and the short of it is that they looked at this operant conditioning theory and they thought, how can we use machines to modify human behavior using operant conditioning uh, for a commercial benefit? And they developed a system where they would give you a reward every time you did what every time you did what the machine wanted and you know what's going to happen here don't you but of course the reward uh, it became Instagram so Instagram is a reward scheme based on BJ Skinner's operant conditioning theory so they've developed better and better ways of rewarding you so you do what the machine wants which is to pick up your phone and it's so powerful that you can't stop and last month I spoke about John Gibson's charity and, and, and Canmore Trust and what happened to Cameron. So I'm not suggesting that what happened to Cameron was related to Instagram, but Instagram and social media um, are damaging society massively. So I don't know what we have to tell each other about these things um, to get us to reduce our consumption. Um, what I can tell you, and being self-righteous about it, is I can't log into my Instagram account today because I don't know my password and I don't have a picture on it. So Nancy, who's behind the camera here, just looked at my account and I don't think I've posted since, what, 14 or 15? Now, I stopped Facebook, Instagram, two, Twitter, like two and a half thousand followers on Twitter at that time. I stopped it in 14, 15. And, and lots of people told me I was mental and I was giving up value and I was doing all this kind of stuff. And do you know what? It's worked out all right. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I've lost a lot of stuff. Um, and I just, I'm talking to my son here today, or my daughters, but particularly my son. You know, the time that you're spending on your on your phone, part of that time should be spending with someone else. 
So one of the final things about Paddy's book, and if you, if honestly, if you want a copy of it, message me and I'll buy it for you, because I think it'd be like giving you the gift of life, is that there's some really powerful research that says one of the best ways to train our emotional intelligence is to read fiction from a book. So it's one of the only ways we can really, really train emotional intelligence um, because it only, it's how we are allowed to enter into someone else's body and someone else's circumstance and to feel what they feel. And that only comes from proper reading. Like it doesn't come from watching and it certainly doesn't come from two or three minute videos or YouTube. <laughs> Um, and so one of the things I'm going to do is make sure I spend a little bit less time on my phone. For my phone time is about 60, 70 minutes a day on average, right? Um, but the average Americans is four hours and my son's is probably a lot more. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to read more fiction. Um, because the interesting thing is that the people who are best at communicating and therefore selling anything are the people with the most emotional intelligence. And the people with the most emotional intelligence are the ones who read fiction. See you.